Welcome Wargamers, join your hosts, Falco and Monty, two Canadian wargaming enthusiasts, as we explore all aspects of tabletop wargaming. We roll dice, talk tactics, share hobby hacks, and explore new tabletop systems, all on the Trident Wargaming Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Trident Wargaming Bolt Action Edition. I'm here with battle buddy Jason. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> the usual. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what that was. But. <laughs> that was a, hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, another another Bolt Action Edition here for... For the podcast, um, of course, we'll be doing the usual, you know, uh, hobby front, talking about what we're working on and this and that. Uh, but this episode, we're going to be talking about: Does size really matter? Now, it's motion in the ocean. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're we're talking about is uh, small unit size. And uh, not so much for like small units, you know, like the two man units that you can buy, um, but more for your regular infantry units. And um, just, I know a lot of players, they like to kind of take smaller units um, just to kind of fill up a, a pre wet requisite, you know, of the army building aspect mm -hmm. of it. Um, but yeah, that's what we're going to kind of concentrate on and uh, kind of look at pros and cons you know, of it and through the different experience levels and stuff as well. So, so we'll get, get to that in a moment. Um, but we'll start off with some hobby front. Now, Jason, I know you put in a big order. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some, uh, terrain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have some, uh, birthday money got accumulated. So I, uh, I went ham on uh, a bunch of Sarissa stuff, which uh, nice. should be here soon. So, uh, yeah, I'm stoked. I have a, you know, probably a, a half table worth of a French villager town. Mm -hmm. So I ordered the other half. Why not? So I think I got 12 more, 12 or 13 more, uh, you know, French kind style World War II, uh, you know, townhouses kind of deals. And uh, one of the manor houses and a playground, I don't know. And one of those, uh, you know, those little, uh, little like uh, gazebo things that go in a park and, you know, the band plays on and stuff. Because I okay. thought, you know, if I wanted to make kind of like a, a park or something to it might be interesting to have kind of an urban setting on the edge of a table. And then really the main part of the table is a, a park setting, you know, like a city park might be a fun battle setting. So, okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. All, all that kind of stuff. And otherwise I've been uh, working on, uh, you know, cause I needed a new army, uh, eighth army working on the uh, Maori, Battalion from the Gentleman's War set, and uh, right. also the uh, Eighth Army box set, and uh, purloined from Andy uh, Matilda's. Oh yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, good old Maddie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm rocking and rolling. I got the HQ done. I got. Uh, a squad almost done. I'm kind of on the buckles and, and buttons kind of stage. Nice. And uh, so just that and a little bit of highlighting and touch-ups, you know, finishing finishing basing. And then uh, I have a 25-pounder and a quad almost done. So I'm actually making progress again. Yay! <laughs> No, that's that's awesome to hear. It's good. It's a lot of uh, a lot of progress and a lot of work being done. Yeah. What about uh, you, sir? What do you got? 
Well, uh, I've been trying to get prepped for uh, the Tank War event that we're going to be doing uh, here in November. So I got a little bit of work to do, and it involves cutting out and creating bacage. So just as an example, this is what I'm talking about right here for anybody watching on YouTube. It so, looks good. Yeah, I'm very pleased. Any, it's very simple. Anybody to do. listening, just listen to the leaves rustle on the uh, yeah <laughs> on the <laughs> on the bocage piece. It's it's amazing. So uh, between you know um, watching some YouTube videos, um, geek gaming, I believe it is, um, and uh, also looking at um, Mel's. Uh, booklet and stuff like that from uh the terrain essentials the terrain tutor you know just looking at that and trying to find kind of what i like as a look for bacage and whatnot so um yeah very easy to make uh very simple to put together um pretty much you can get your foam core your pink foam core from like you know here it's home depot but uh that you get some uh putty some actually silicone kind of caulking that dries really fast um put in some grit some sand which i know where there's plenty of um and then uh just get some flock and, and whatnot and i actually ordered some of the um geek gaming um flock and whatnot the foliage from from their site and it's really really good actually it's it's really nice it has a nice effect that's, oh, the geek! Uh, you mean you ordered it from the Geek Gaming Scenics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke's, yeah, that stuff looks, Luke's apps and stuff. You know that uh, Luke yeah. that does all that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I think his product range is Geek Gaming Scenics, if I remember correctly. So, um, we'll put a link in the uh, in the description Dude. and everything for it too. But yeah, like just if you're again watching on YouTube, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. Which is, uh, it looks super good, dude. Really good effect, right? So, thanks. So, yeah, that, yeah. and, uh, they don't take that long to, to put together. They're lightweight and they're effective. So, then those are like six inches. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at because I, I kind of have to concentrate on getting that yeah. stuff done. Otherwise, good I'll... thing ab ab about those too, the bocage is it really is, uh, it really changes the battlefield a lot more than maybe a couple of trees does. Yes. Just the way that they work in the game. You could also just use them as small hedges if you wanted. Yep. But it, you, if you go with the full, you know, full blown bocage style rules, they're basically an inch across area terrain. Yeah, essentially uh, with, until you get up to them, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, as soon as you touch it, then you can, it's as if you're in area terrain, you know, where you can shoot out of and you get shot at. But otherwise, it blocks line of sight. Yeah. And it's, then uh, what you could do too, though, is like, like here, like I've done here, I've left an open spot. Oh, yeah. Right. So like tanks can put their, you know. Oh, it looks super pimp. So stuff like that. And I, and I've, I've cut some out to look like, um, uh, tanks have gone through it, you know, they've plowed through. So, um, so, and then I'll, I'll make some little gates out of some wood and whatnot too. And, and this and that. So yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be a good addition to, uh, the gaming tables, which I could bring out, you know, every week if people want to use them and stuff. Um, and then of course it's obviously a, a great addition for my own personal collection for future events and whatnot. Right. So Sweet. So that's that's kind of where I'm at, mindset of getting terrain done, hobby wise, um, and then of course uh, looking at the new army, you know the uh, the Germans, the DAC. Um, so eventually be jumping into that, and then nice. uh, oh, and one thing I forgot to mention too, I also got uh, two desert mats. Oh, cool. From a uh, cigar box so that I can do my big table all desert. I need to order from so, them. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love their mats. You know, they did not sponsor, but uh, man, 
<laughs> yeah, that is. I yeah, no, it's true. Um, that is that is one thing that I'll probably, we'll probably do an episode on it too. But um, just on on um, the essentials and like the importance of not just concentrating on your armies, but concentrating on your collection of terrain as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it doesn't take like, yeah, we go a little bit ham, uh, but you can really have a really cool looking table with yep. not a lot of money. Uh, and, you know, and there's, there's so many sources for like uh, information and ways to make things uh, with a, a pretty moderate budget, but I, I really look at it as, uh, you know, if I'm spending X on my miniatures, I kind of want to spend, you know, you know, uh, 20% or 15% on terrain. It's, it's like the setting, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, uh, reading a book, but everything else except for the characters are cut out of it. If, if you're only playing worried about the models, the terrain builds the the entire context of what you're, you know, the, of the story that you're uh, you're playing on the table, right? It yeah. it brings it to life so much more. But I mean, you can do it. I mean, with a, a gajillion dollars, right down to almost nothing, you can make some really effective looking terrain, super cheap, and it's just about. Like planning your tip. I mean, that's not the subject of today, so I'm not going to go too much. But it's amazing. Do, do it. I agree with Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's true. And um, I just a, a short note is I find I am I don't know. I, I get more excited or more satisfied playing my game on a lot of this custom made or World War Two you know style. Um, kind of terrain that players have put in some time into compared to, um, you know, some plastic kits that a company has, has made and, and sells by the gazillion, you know, billions. So, um, and that's just a personal thing for me, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Even uh, how it's placed, I don't mm -hmm. want to target other games systems, but, uh, I know what you're in my about. mind, I don't like cookie oh, cutter. Well, yeah, well, just well, this quarter of the table has two pieces. So this table quarter has two pieces of terrain and two pieces and two pieces. So we have an exactly equal balance. And, and <laughs> that might be important, but also like how it, yeah, I want a story when I'm playing a game. Like, oh, here's a town. There's backyards in this town that, because of course you have backyards. Yeah. Oh, the, and then. My favorite terrain pieces to make are the little vignettes. Like, yeah, I have a couch that I often put in the street. Why? I don't know. Because I figured probably some sentries put it out there for fun because they wanted to sit down and there was a couch in the house next door. The grenade in the piano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The old, yeah. The piano, all that stuff just brings it to life. But a anyway, little extra that's... detail, right? Like, that's totally and uh, like you enjoy that and I enjoy that so and and I'm in you know I'm in it for both and that depends on the game that I'm playing so but um but yeah overall pretty freaking cool so yeah do it <laughs> get into it um just do it yeah, exactly um <laughs> but uh yeah going on I guess we'll kind of start off on uh our main topic with the small unit sizes. So, you know, it was funny uh, the other the other day, well, one of the newer players show, was showing me some lists and whatnot, and I noticed right off the bat, I noticed that he had taken a lot of smaller units. And to me, I instantly thought, why? Mm. And one one of the big reason was the theater selector that he was working with it was um he was able to get a tank for every two infantry units that he selected so min max you know took took bare minimum on the infantry units and then the tanks which yeah, is fair enough would, it's a theme right yeah you know it's I, a, a tanks supporting infantry that kind of thing right 
maybe they're rolling in from whatever, but, um, yeah, I just kind of, I was kind of a little perplexed. I was kind of looking at it and I was like, I don't think I would do that, you know, myself. Right. But, you know, going into like pros and cons of small units. Um, well, one pro mm -hmm. I think is, uh, some theaters or some selectors, some themes, it does make sense to have smaller units. Right. Uh, in, uh, in this list, if you're going for that, uh, kind of armored company vibe, but not necessarily being armored company, just supported, essentially you're supported by infantry tanks. I know what, uh, uh, it's in the Western desert book, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So that's, that's how they roll. Uh, so I get trying to, uh, fit that. Uh, also, if you're using, uh, I think British really is the only one with the tiny transport issue. The, um, the, uh, trying to fit, trying to fit them into friend carriers. The yeah, in, yeah, yeah, into the universal carriers. That makes a lot of sense too. So, so um, tell tell the folks there, like, because you you actually do play that, right? Well, I have I haven't played that lit, but that's what I'm building towards with the. The Maori division is that off of that selector, but you have no, not that specific list. But I, I'm talking about your. Um, I think it's your Canadian. Oh yeah, yeah, right? with the uh, the armored with carriers, the universal carriers. Yeah, yeah. So, so I I roll with. Uh, oh, it depends on the size of the game, but I, I roll with the five man squads. Mm -hmm. And what I do uh, too is that I I build them uh, because of the universal carriers. And I generally build, almost always I'll have five uh, infantry uh, squads, d maybe more, maybe less, depending on the size of the game. And usually I'll do um, two uh, equipped with the LMG. Okay. And three with the sergeant with the uh, uh, SMG. And because I'm not doing it to uh, skimp, on points or anything, I usually take them as veteran, mm -hmm. uh, and then I get access to another uh, SMG if I'm remembering correctly. So then I have the three squads that can roll out with two SMGs, uh, and then I'll have my officer. And a lot of times I'll have a, a flamethrower, and they're kind of a uh, tucked into another SMG or into another uh, universal carrier. carrier yeah. Uh, so they, they rip around and that list does. Okay. It, it seems to it, be effective. It's, right? it's good, but it definitely has drawbacks like the, uh, a, the, the open top carriers can get pinned, but as far as the uh, squad size, they have no, resiliency at least with the veterans because i have played them regular before and they they're they're not super good with the veterans you got the resiliency so you can survive a little bit better and get mm -hmm. into the fight um otherwise you have to play very and this is you have to play way more careful you can't take risk that one shot in the open might just wipe you out. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's kind of one of the things we're going to get to as well is that kind of stuff. Right. But, uh, yeah. So, so I would say the the positives is that they're, they're easier to maneuver around and hide, mm -hmm. uh, just the five man squads, assuming they're out of the vehicles, just in general, uh, the five man squads are way less cumbersome. They can fit in, you know, to the nooks and crannies, get out of line of sight, fit them. Well, you can uh, hug them to a wall, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hug them to a wall. It's easier to get hard cover where, you know, 50% or more of the the unit is behind, uh, you know, something that would offer you hard cover, right? Yeah. Uh, so those are all uh, benefits that I see. Uh, it, certainly drawbacks are that you're getting, if you get hit with, especially a template, 
and you weren't careful, uh, you're you're toast. You only have to you only have to lose three guys to take that morale check. Yeah, that that is definitely then, one of the things that really could mess them up. Is is the template for sure? Oh yeah, right. Just squashes them. So, I mean, even a couple of machine guns. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot. That's that's a problem. That being said, I will say that the last couple times I've played, I started playing with. Uh, uh, it's a little bit gamey, but not necessarily because I'm trying no, to. That's fine. Yeah, I, it, essentially, I'm uh, running full squads, but then I'll have two squads that have a lot of armies have a uh, option for uh, two. Uh, LMGs in a squad, if you, especially veterans. Yep. Uh, so you take a small squad with two LMGs and then kind of use that as a replacement for an MMG. Right? Two LMGs get eight shots or ten shots if you're German. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and they're not really that much more than an MMG team plus you get mobility you're not fixed plus you uh you know you can uh uh well it kind of counts as mobility really but the the duck and move you you're not uh uh you got the kind of 360 uh you oh know, your line your of line sight. of sight yeah yeah no that's true uh, i never thought about you know what i never even that even had never even dawned on me about doing that you know that's that's like tournament tournament level there, Jason. What the hell? <laughs> it, it was yeah, and I'm not gonna lie. It was actually pretty, uh, pretty effective. Oh, I don't doubt Th it. Throwing out throwing out that lot of a lot of firepower. But this is the thing I'll say about where small teams are effective. A that kind of thing can be effective, mm -hmm. but it has to be balanced with full teams, like full units to absorb punishment. I think if you have all small teams and they're not veteran, you're you're just toast. Well, the guys if your that, whole army's like that. Yeah, you're. There's no way you have nothing. N nothing with any uh, resiliency to capture or hold objectives. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, gosh, really, at that point, if you're a five man squad, I could potentially assault you. With my, uh, you know, artillery observer and his buddy, and maybe win that combat. Hmm. Especially your, if you give your your air observer and his buddy have a friggin' or your artillery observer has a friggin' SMG, you might win that combat. So is that you know what I mean? That's how resilient they are. Is that small teams that have a single purpose might be a challenge for them. Yeah, there's that's the thing with with the team small team and the way I look at it. And you know me, usually I play with some large squads. Oh yeah, um, and that's how I to caveat by the way. I mean, really I prefer yeah, full squads. Well, if, full if, squads yeah, if, all if, the way. If you could get full strength, cool. If you can't cuz you, you know, have to shave off some points here and there well that usually you're shaving off some infantry right oh yeah um yeah. but you know another another thing too with like these small teams that is um could be a a pro for that too is you know if you are taking a small team and let's say you're playing as americans um it wouldn't hurt to have like a small team kitted out and have them out flank right it's not a yeah. whole it's not a whole bunch of points sunk into a unit but it's still a small unit that can do some damage as they come on the board right yeah i mean they, even five guys uh you know with rifles if they pop mm -hmm. on at the at the right time i mean they can really they, you know, they can really uh get that last minute objective kill that yeah. officer that's been dinking around or assault that uh you know that mortar team that's you know 
hunkered down at an objective or so whatever right yeah um and yeah and if they don't come on you're you're also not crying that hard (laughs) you know no for sure but like even because what what's uh Mm -hmm. that's regular regular engineer just looking at Americans, see what their veteran squads are, if they have them. Not sure. But even still, like, the amount of points that you're going to be spending on uh, some of these units. So even, okay, yeah, U.S. Marine Squad, for example, right? So 81 points for veterans. That's like, and that's that's seven men in their in their unit. Yeah. And then you end up spending six points to have two with machine sub machine guns, and then three more men could have uh, bars for five points each. So really, it's not that much, right? It's probably just over a hundred. And um, they have other options too, but like. A unit like that coming on the board that has some firepower for mo- like uh, with mobility and like the bonuses of the Americans firing with their weapons as they yeah. are mobile. Um, that's pretty freaking good. You know, I, I that's definitely something to think about. I never even thought about that until we were talking here, but oh, flanking has been coming up more and more. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. To me, I guess it's trying to find a place for them. What what's their purpose? What they're going to be doing? Right? Having if they have the option of transports, like like your uh, you know universal carriers, um, you play them you play them really good. Um, it's it's hard sometimes to knock them out of those carriers, right? Unless you have big guns. If you don't, well, could be some issues. But uh, at the same time, even lighter vehicles, you know, um, Dusty and his trucks, long range desert group there, like they're brutal. I'm I'm not sure the size of his units, but they're not full sized units, but they, they definitely do have a lot of firepower in them. So it works. And when he's zipping around, you know, and then drops these little units and well, first off, mows you down with the truck. And then comes out and then mows you with these veterans and takes out half your guys because, you know, you've already placed an order on your unit and now you're kind of stuck yeah. there. Well, when your turn comes again next turn, you know, on the next turn and you go to fire at him, well, he's still at full strength and he's he's probably a veteran. So tough as nails, right? But yeah, some good points. Uh, cons, you know... Um, Again, they can be easier to kill, um, especially if you're not going veteran. So uh, close combat wise, you'll usually be outnumbered, I'd yeah. say. Um, and one and thing it, we didn't, yeah. Oh, sorry. One thing we didn't bring up for a plus or a minus, depending on your setting, is a dice. Mm. It's a good way to get dice in the bag, mm-hmm. but also could be a negative some tournaments and stuff if you're if this is where you're playing kill points have a have a dust uh uh dice limit so yeah are you going to eat into your dice limit you know that might uh become an issue uh something to think about but certainly in a in a standard game having more dice is uh pretty freaking nice and then yeah you just mentioned kill points is a big thing yeah, if you happen to roll a kill point scenario, and you're goofing around with all these tiny units. I mean, it doesn't take much for a couple of couple of things to shoot at them if you leave them anywhere in the open, and you're, you're just gonna give them give them points. Yeah, yeah, it's um, that's the thing with that. You always gotta remember kill points, um, especially if you. You know, you you actually don't play them right. Um, it, it all it takes is just one good placed hit, or catches you off guard, or 
you've issued an order and you're not down, they're probably toast. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. Small, small units, visits, regular size units. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm leaning towards, you know, regular sized units. Um, I prefer having that meat where I can take a couple hits. Um, yeah. How about yourself, Jason? You obviously you, oh, know, yeah. you play them. You play small units, but yeah, regular size or or uh, full sized wherever I can is generally how I want to roll. Yeah. You know, like I said before, if it fits the theme or if it's to fit into those carriers, I make it work. But generally, I want to roll with those uh, full size full size units. But I am liking how that one squad idea with the uh, basically replacing machine guns yeah medium machine guns with the lmgs uh, i'm kind of liking how that's working out for me mm -hmm. but uh again it's not a historical thing it's uh that is a straight up straight up gameism i will admit yeah, that it, yeah <laughs> and you know what and i i get that part of it too i mean um players of, of all sorts are out there. We all play multiple games. So, you know, uh, game styles and, 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 um, you know, list crafting or, you know, list theory and stuff like that. It, it's going to come about. It's just, it's natural for us gamers to do that. Right. Um, not, totally necessar that. not necessarily like try to exploit something, but trying to maximize or, or build on to something that you, came across of uh, some kind of combo or whatever luckily in in you know bolt action is not really so much about that you know there's no crazy special rules that you could combine and all of a sudden you have this um uh no death star kind of thing no i mean and even this is it's uh, uh it's minor this hack is hack, hack. In quotations is uh slightly more effective than a medium machine gun i mean it's not gonna yeah. you know break the chains of the universe or anything no no uh, it's, it's it's legit it's it's all good but i mean it gives people ideas too right like that's oh yeah oh, that's yeah. a really good idea i've never thought of really doing that because like i played soviets and they have their you know they have their guard squads or their lmg squads that can do that well yeah and he, that's where that idea was born is because I was using I, here or there, I would try the LMG squad and they were terrible. Yeah. Cause I would bring them at full strength, but really I would just be using them for the LMGs. But because I have all these frigging clunkers around mm -hmm. just taking up breathing space, you know, <laughs> making my guys more visible and more vulnerable in in a lot of ways, uh, it it was just more baggage, and this unit became way more effective when I ditched that extra baggage. And for for the points, I could basically take two of those squads without all the fat for a little bit more than one squad. So I basically doubled my. Uh, doubled my LMGs for a not very significant amount of points more than uh, what the one was costing at full strength. Right. Right. Uh, well, that's fair enough. Again, yeah. that's all down to, to list building. And, and the thing too is like there's in each nation book, you know, army book, this and that, um, the unit compositions are going to be slightly different where you might actually come across opportunities or options to, to do that. And not just with, you know, LMGs, but there might be other weapons like that out there that you can do that with. Right. You know, Oh, totally. So it's, uh, it's clever. It's definitely clever. I'll make sure to target that unit first when I see it on the board across from me, though, Jason. So. Oh, I I would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, but yeah, there there you have it. I mean, good and bad, uh, pros and cons. A lot of good points there. Um, you know, for anybody who's 
played them out like that or have been finding they're having troubles with them kind of like that or armies so um pretty cool so um uh, going forward kind of uh one of our other topics of the day here was comparing some of the um you know engineering squads and like the pioneer squads and whatnot um you know are they really that different uh weapon options that kind of stuff right so <clears throat> overall i've been seeing um a fair bit of players using these and mm -hmm. and i think it's more of you know the options in the units of course uh well, what they could get especially with that um in unit flamethrower usually yeah so, yeah the ability to have basically two flamethrowers because usually you get one option for the standard flamethrower yeah and then to have one that you can bury in a unit it's a little bit more resiliency mm -hmm. yeah yeah big time usually the engineers are veterans yeah. kind of across across the board yeah again uh, you want to make them probably vets uh i we found too remember in our scenarios engineers mm -hmm. are really important in a lot of scenarios not so important outside of scenarios other than for some flavor or to get that extra flamethrower yep generally other than that most of them have the same or very similar options than just a standard veteran unit has yeah tank hunters um what else here flamethrower of course like you mentioned americans they get access to the bars two of them and then um, smg for nco and one other dude so pretty pretty basic loadout for them it's very similar to some of the other units besides um you know besides the flamethrower uh let me take a look here i know i don't know if japan has them that i don't know i'll have to take a quick look here uh, da, 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 da. where are we but yeah i do uh i do like using them for that for that flamethrower and i just i i you know we really learned that lesson in that first scenario with that bridge we had to in the mm. stalingrad campaign where uh that bridge had to be taken out and those engineers got the extra uh, uh what is it the uh modifier for it oh yes yeah which was vital right and and we didn't even i mean i think you took it for flavor you happen to have an engineer squad, right? Yep. Am I remembering correctly? Yep. Yeah. But I they, believe you, they you were took the first it for flavor, hit, I think. And then we realized, oh wait, <laughs> these guys are important. And I'm imagining that, especially uh, beach landings and stuff like that, the they're going to be a super important uh, part of it because a lot of their loadout too is uh, various engineering equipment, to kind of across the board for demolition charges and bangalore torpedoes and those kind of as as we've seen in the campaign for the, the yeah. soviets um there was one mission that was played actually multiple times and um yeah your your engineers got these charges that they needed to blow an opening on the buildings that you need to take yeah yeah that too yeah so if you didn't have that um mind you i had to you know like adjust the the scenario a little bit just to fit in with the players but yeah if you were playing that normally and you didn't have engineers well there would be no way of getting a victory right yeah so pretty much just a, you have to you have to bring them but certainly something to think about uh whether or not you want to kind of build that option out exactly. is that if you plan on and on you know doing a focus on one of the books or burning through scenarios i mean they're really pretty important for a bunch of them and just kind of cool like i love the mm -hmm. idea of it i lo i loved it when we figured out 
oh wait, we need we need you need these for this bridge. <laughs> yes. Very much so. I'm looking in the British book, the main book, I don't really see Do they have an engineering squad? Oh yeah, the Royal Engineers, yeah. They, oh, okay. Yeah, I figured they would have. Um And it's pretty I mean pretty standard. Same thing again with the uh access to various you know demo charges and whatnot and a flamethrower and i can't remember exactly what they're uh they have the what is it, like a the little remote control uh explosive tank thing that they have i think as well oh the the germans have the yeah, goliath the pioneer yeah they have that yeah. um but otherwise pretty much kind of the same kind of build yeah. smg you know, LMG in the unit. Um, yeah. Miniatures are pretty neat. Yeah. I have that unit. Um, so, so really, in my mind, so far as a, a bog standard game, pickup game, you're probably better off just with veterans unless you want a specific piece of equipment. Um, the only other thing is if you're going for flavor or flair, they 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 fit that concept well and again scenarios but really mostly you can achieve those a very similar unit composition yeah with uh with just regular old unless, Vettis. unless you're soviet units then you get yourself the oh yeah the assault you engineer squad fancy so, the body armor mm -hmm. Space Marines. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, but they do get the start game pricey, right? That's like five points per model. So, And they're slowed down. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're tougher. But again, same thing. Flamethrower, uh, LMG, SMGs, body armor, anti-tank. So get them a transport because they're not really going to be moving too, too fast. Right? <laughs> So, but again, another different option um, that makes that unit slightly different and tougher, um, yeah. especially if all of a sudden they're inside a building as well, you know, um, but. Oh, totally. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the, the flamethrower, yeah, assistant. So, and I'm sure there's, they're sure there's a whole bunch of other engineering squads and this and that throughout, um, a lot of the campaign books. And, and like Jason said, just, um, you'll really start to notice that you'll need these specialized kind of units throughout a lot of scenarios. Um, so as you're playing, like I know when we first started doing, um, some scenarios, I remember building, I think it was uh, Germany strikes we were playing and I had built an army and realized that I did not have enough <clears throat> infantry to get to the building to use the breaching charges or whatever they were called to, to, to op make an opening in the building because, oh, I, yeah. Yeah. because I ended up focusing more of on the armored cars that you were able to get multiple of. Right. So yeah. by, by the time my infantry got, to the building they're already whittled they're already pinned they're not moving you know um that was the post office scenario. yeah coming to close combat you know getting gonna get beat down because i'm like half strength so yeah a lot of stuff to think about a lot of stuff to look at for that um if you're making that themed army all the power to you it's awesome if maybe you just like painting those kinds of miniatures, right? Maybe it's your jam. Maybe it's your thing. Um, game wise, again, like I said, there's no, there's really no big powerhouse Death Star combo by taking these units or, you know, taking um, a portion of these units. If you're making a small unit kind of thing, um, you know, like, like the Soviet veteran engineers, I'd probably make a small team because they're just that expensive. You know, yeah. um, but yeah, there's a lot of good stuff that you can do. A lot of, uh, potential for making unique looking armies and play styles. 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you're, if you are players that just love playing scenarios, you know, again, all the power to you, go for it and go hard, you know? So, but other than that, they're pretty, um, they're pretty much kind of the same as other units, really. But they sound fancy. That's... I would put them in a transport for sure. Oh yeah. Get them where you need them, right? So I know Bill has played me with his Americans and yeah, he's like roasted a building that my Germans were in. It caused havoc. And then he roasted another unit to the next turn. And it was like, are you out of fuel yet or what? <laughs> you know, it was like MVP of the game. So, but you'll get those moments too, where you're just hooting and hollering because you missed your shot. You know? Yeah. You, you, you roll that, that one. It's like, <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, I've done it plenty of times. So, but yeah, there's an advantage of uh, before you sign off. An advantage I just thought of of having a flamethrower embedded in that engineer squad. If you roll a one and poof, your flamethrower is gone. Mm -hmm. You don't give up a kill point. That is very true. Because if you roll a one, you pull that dice from the bag. Uh, but if you roll a one and it's in an engineer squad, the engineer squad isn't dead. No. no so uh, you uh, protect yourself from that. I mean, really, and you got a one in six chance. Probably you're only going to shoot your flamethrower once or twice, honestly. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and there's also the fact that um, he is protected up to yeah. a point of um, exceptional damage or sniper, of course. Yeah. Right? So it's uh, the pros, pros of being inside the unit protected. Um, but, yeah, it's good points. That's, that's pretty good. Actually, the kill point part is something to definitely consider, right? Um, but, again, having two of them in an army... Two is nice. Yeah. But uh, also that small engineer squad with the one flamethrower isn't really that much more than uh, than the flamethrower, you know, team. I think the teams are a little bit pricier J than... Uh, Jason's getting gamey again. I'm getting gamey again. Oh, my <laughs> God. What the hell? <laughs> No, I will kidding. eventually win a game. <laughs> no. Cool. No, that's that's good stuff. Um, and yeah, before we uh, finish off here as well, um, we do have a, a tank war event coming up. Uh, it's going to be pretty fun. I got 12 players, which is going to be pretty cool. A uh, little bit of a fun scenario. Um, even though it is tank wars, like there is an importance on infantry. Because um, there will be objectives that you need to hold uh, with your infantry, just to to make it a bit of an interesting kind of game. Because there will be uh, you know a fair bit of units on the board. So I plan uh, on circling the wagons, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, but um, yeah, I just I, I had a couple guys kind of ask me and whatnot, and just told them straight up they're going to be for objectives. So. You know, take them, right? Sweet. Whole purpose is just to have a bit of a flow of, of a game where, you know, your one side's not just going to stay bunkered in on one side and uh, and then just uh, sit there all game kind of thing. So I, I'm, I'm actually planning on doing the opposite min-maxing. I'm going to, uh, the standard is take the small infantry squad and max out your tanks. I'm going to take as much infantry as I can and min my tanks. Min your tanks, yeah. <laughs> I want the cheapest, <laughs> the least amount of tanks that I'm allowed to take. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be good. Um, you know, with the bookage and whatnot, um, I'll have to sit down and, and take a look at the specific rules for them, like the specific ones. I know they're pretty simple, but uh, to keep the game flow going kind of thing. But it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then of course, 
Uh, in December, our uh, friends down south in Calgary, they uh, have a event, a tournament happening as well. Um, funny enough, there is going to be a pretty strong Edmonton presence there. There's about six of us going. Ooh, did they fill up yet? Uh, I don't think they're quite full yet. So, so I'm um, on the fence. I'm on the fence if I can go. That's on the third, right? Yeah, I believe so. So, so okay. Yeah, but um, pretty cool and pretty interesting. Uh, it will be the first time kind of going out there and meeting them. And then I'm going to have uh, Dana. Uh, I'm going to have them on the podcast here as well. So we can talk about that a little later. So, Sweet. Yeah, uh, just it's community, right? Trying to kind of incorporate and communicate and, and try to uh, collaborate as well as games start happening and bolt action starts getting bigger out over here in the West. Um, try to do something with it. So, Sweet. Pretty cool. But uh, thanks for joining me again, Jason, as always. No worries, my friend. Excellent. And thank you guys for listening. So if you did enjoy this, you know, hit the uh, like button. Um, if you want, subscribe. Uh, check out our Instagram, you know, our Facebook page, that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll have lots of pictures. I'll have uh, pictures of the ongoing creation of the Bacage, uh, kind of the stuff that I've used. Just make a little, uh, little picture uh, folder, I guess, for it. And then, uh, who knows, maybe I'll make a little video on how I make them. Um, which would be good, I think. But, Sweet. Uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and we will catch you next time. Bye. Trident Wargaming. Build it, paint it, play it.